Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. It is sheer coincidence that three World War II vets have moved onto the same block in St. John, Washington. Each veteran's house displays a replica of the plane he flew during the Second World War. The B-24, piloted by Bryant Smick. The B-17, flown by Jack Smith. And Laverne Siler's Hellcat. The model planes glisten in the warm sun. But on this fateful day, a dark storm has rolled in, and a new enemy looms on the horizon. There is a fourth World War II vet on this street. Ed Sherman served his country not as a pilot, but as an artilleryman, manning his 155 millimeter cannon known as the Long Tom. Ed has had enough of seeing the Flyboys taking over his neighborhood, so he enlisted the help of artist Cedric Hughesby. Cedric came to the rescue and created a model of the Long Tom cannon for Ed's roof. When Ed needed the model cannon to wage his good-natured battle, he knew just who to call. Cedric Hughesby is a former high school teacher living in the nearby town of Ewan. He's retired now, but he loves keeping busy working on projects in his shop. Cedric's interest in metal sculpting began when he saw a man making model car chassis out of welding rod. They were simple creations, just uncovered chassis, axles, and wheels. And I went, I thought to myself, I can do this. Anyway, I went home and tried one, and it turned out all right, but I thought, what, what's the sense of making something like this? It's just plain, just wire in the shape of a car with wheels on it. So then I started making little uh, birds. My first thing I started was I uh, made a seagull and put him on a piling and then put him on a freestanding base and then I ran the arc welder around the base of it to make it look like ripples in the water. And from there I just started going on and on. Cedric continued to experiment in his newfound medium. Soon, he began to specialize in farm scenes. I have no idea how I got the inspiration to make those pictures, but one day I just started working on one. I've never had an art class or anything, and I can't really draw, but I can put those together. Basically, the reason I started doing the scenes I, I do is because I grew up on a wheat and cattle ranch in eastern Montana, and I was interested in that kind of thing. And, uh, I have done a couple little uh, uh, ocean scenes, but mostly it's been a farm scene. It usually takes Cedric between 80 and 100 hours to complete a single sculpture. His creative spirit, which was nurtured during his country childhood, can be seen in his work, as well as in the process of making his sculptures. I use a tin stip, ball peen hammers, and needle nose pliers and stand pliers and the side cutters and the vise and the welder are mostly my tools. I made this jig out of a bunch of scrap iron to bend a sheet of tin into a log. And so I just put a plain sheet of tin like that into this jig. And I just cramp it down like that, and it makes a log. And then I go through, cut it out with the tin snips, and do it again until I put a bunch of logs to make log cabins with. I use uh, just tin. A lot of it I scrounge up for scrap. And uh, the branches on the trees, when I was teaching, I'd have the janitor save me the notebooks, the spiral notebooks, and I'd take the wire out of the back of the notebooks and stretch it out and use it for the branches on the trees because they used to be about three different sizes. So you could start with a big one and then a smaller one and then a little one on the end and it gives the taper on the branch. But you can't find them anymore now. All the notebooks are made with a standard wire. It's all the same size. So I don't know what I'm going to do down the line. I still have some of that wire, but I'm running out. Cedric's innovations go beyond making jigs and creating textures from trash. He also utilizes foreshortened angles in his work. He began using these angles when he had made his first sculpture to scale and found that it extended too far from the wall. 
after I made that barn where it was sticking straight out, I knew this wouldn't work. And so I put the three-dimensional effect in it because you can see the whole view of the barn that way. And, and I try to put it, uh, make it larger in the front than it is in the back to give it that uh, depth to it. My dad wanted to be an artist and he grew up on a farm in Minnesota and, and his family just shunned him because they told him all artists ever do is starve to death and he wanted to go to art school and uh, he, do, he, he drew a few drawings is all he ever did. They were laying around the house for years and I don't know why he didn't take it up later. But, but I've always been interested in it and when I was in high school I started carving wood and I wasn't too bad and I don't know why I gave up. I just quit and I've never went back to it again. So I've always been interested in it. Now that Cedric has settled on metal as his main medium, he's been making a name for himself as a sculptor. My, my idea to begin with was just to make them as a hobby because I enjoy doing them, but I sell them as I go along now. Sometimes it might take a long time and sometimes they sell right away. And, and a few times I get commissions to make things too. The sculptures of Cedric Hughesby are on display in homes and businesses around St. John. And now, on the house of World War II veteran Ed Sherman, where this cannon sculpture stands as a sentinel against the encroaching aerial enemies in the neighborhood. Well, I live across the street. In fact, I started this. I built model airplanes for uh, my friends to make weather vanes out of them. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, we have a ground pounder in our midst who comes up with jealousy, and he's going to shoot us down. I think it, uh, it, it shows what a deep feeling that Ed Sherman has regarding uh, the war and his participation in it. This is his way of taking some revenge away from the pilots who've been getting all the tension up so far. We're, we're having a lot of fun with it anyhow. We're, we'll take care of him if he ever starts any trouble. Oh well, getting too old anyhow I guess. <laughs> If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.